Hi Flossy friends, thanks for joining me today. I thought I would share my Stitch Mania plans with you. I wasn't able to join in in Stitch, Stitch Mania last year because I was in the middle of moving back to the States from England and I just didn't think I could cope with the move, finding a new home, and starting 15 new projects all at one time, not to mention uh, unpacking the nearly 300 boxes uh, once they arrived. So I'm very excited to be able to join in this year and I'm excited to share my plans with you on what I'm going to do. In an attempt to prepare for this next month, I made myself a stitchy bag to hold all of my projects. And as you can see, I have Quite a few. <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks, I promise. Um, I, maybe it is. Maybe I've gone completely mental. I don't know. But I have my master list going on here, which I would have had this video sooner, but my son, who lives with me, decided that it would be very funny to hide my master list on me. And I... I had to convince him to tell me where it was. So, what I plan to do, before you think I, like I said, I've gone completely mental. You know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I have uh, two or three fairly large projects. So for Stitch Mania, I decided that I would do 30 small projects. And they are all from my stash. They're, um... All the fabrics for my stash, all the flosses for my stash, the patterns are either uh, free ones or ones that I've had for years and years or from magazines. So let's get started. My very first one is called Green Santa and it's by Birds of a Feather. And I have already stitched the black Santa and the red Santa, and then the green and the gold will also just go on this one. I'm not going to show what fabrics that I'm going to use because we'll be here forever and I don't want to bore you to death. You'll see those when I do my updates um, through May. The next project, so that's, I'm not, I have these numbered, but I'm not going to do them in any particular order. Each day I'm just going to reach into my stitchy bag, I'm going to pull one out, and that's what I'm going to work on. So the next one that I have is called Coffin Buzz, and it's a free one uh, from Plum Street Samplers. Sorry, I'm referring to my list here. Uh, from Plum Street Samplers. And if I can figure it all out, I will share links with the, the free ones that are still available. Um, in the description below. But here is what it will be looking like. Again, it's Plum Street Samplers and it's called Coffin Buzz. And clearly it was from 2011. But it is still available on, on her blog. Okay, so the next one, I've had this one in my stash for quite a while. It is called Antique Lock and Keys. And it is from Shakespeare's Peddler. My next one, you guys, this is a fairly popular one by Lizzie Kate called Life's a Stitch. And this one is called Pure and Pleasant by Primitive Bettys. And I believe she has an Etsy store. I know she has a blog spot. Not sure about the Etsy store, but. And I'm gonna be making that little bird too. This is another familiar one. Um, the Needle's Eye by our favorite Prairie Schooler. And I'll be stitching this one, the Stitching Ladies. I'm excited do that one. I love that one. 
Okay, and then we have from, <laughs> this is a very, very old one. And I paid $3.75 for this magazine. It's just from Just Cross Stitch, January, February, 1985. And I will be stitching. It didn't really have a name to it, um, but it's just this little mini sampler. They had a section in the magazine called uh, Coffee Break Stitching, and this is one of the, the designs from Coffee Break Stitching. Okay, and then we're going to move on to this one is from uh, Punch Needle and Primitive, Primitive Stitcher magazine. If you're not familiar with this, um, it's in its first year of publication and um, it has some really cute primitive designs in it. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend it. But this one is called My Soul is Fed and it's designed by Gail Rieger. Very cute. And I'm gonna make it up similar to what she has shown here to a pin keep and thread keeper. Okay, my next one is again a free pattern and it is by, change the page. <laughs> um, it's on the Sub Rosa blog spot. And I'm going to make it a bit more prim than what it's when I'm showing you here. It, and it's called B. And the next one, I have the pattern. It wasn't free. I have stitched it once, but I want to stitch it again. And it is called the Sunflower Sampler. And it's by Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill and I don't know even if they're still in business but they always just they never had a photo of their charts they just had the chart um, or the, a photo of their the completed piece and so again it's called Sunflower Sampler and I just I have this framed in my kitchen but I want to make like a little pin keep with it. So I decided to stitch it again. Then we have <clears throat> one by you and I friends called Be Simple. And I'm gonna make it, a, I'm gonna change the colors up in this a little bit. The, the Be Skeep isn't as colorful as I'd like it. So I'm going to switch that out. Again, that's by you and I friends. And that is a division of um, Twisted Threads. Kind of want a bee theme here. <laughs> Again, I just pulled all these from my stash. And I've had, I've had these for years and I thought, why not start them? You're never going to finish them unless you start them. So let's just start. This one is Heart and Hand Weeby. And one more bee thing. And this one is out of Just Cross Stitch, no November 1995. And this one is called Be Kind. I'm not going to make it into a bell pull. I'm not sure exactly. I think I pulled fabric just to do it as a framed piece. And my next one is by the Primitive... No, I'm sorry. I have that wrong. No, it is by the Primitive here. And it's called Merry Primitive Christmas. And it's another free one. And it's on her blog spot as well. Um, 
Then my next one is a digital one, but I pulled up a photo of it. I have the, the DVD for, for this. It's called oops, Rooster Ride, and it's by Kathy Barrick. You may recognize that name from uh, Caratel Samplings. But I just thought this was crazy. I mean, Santa's being pulled by a rooster, and I loved it. And that is from um, Just Cross Stitch. Let's see. The Christmas 2001 Christmas magazine. Okay. Then my next one is from the Christmas Ornaments 2012, and I'll be doing this again as a primitive hair. I believe in Santa. She is one of my favorite prim designers. She has some amazing patterns. I think that was the only one in that magazine. And another oldie but goodie. This one is uh, from Just Cross Stitch 2010 Special Christmas Issue. And I'm actually going to be stitching this one right here. Love and Joy Come to You. Page three. This one is an, from another issue of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. This is the um, Christmas 2015 issue, and it is called. Christmas by Joyce Reed. I just think that one's adorable. And I have another free one, and we're stepping back in time here. It's called Hearts for America, and it was published in 1999. And back in the day, um, you would get, like if you placed an order, a mail order, from your not so local needle workshop, they would include free designs, and that's how I received this one. And it's by uh, Shepherd's Bush, and it's called Hearts for America, and it will look something like that. And yet another free design, and this one is, I think this one is still available. It's from uh, Glory B, and I want to see if it has a date on it. Hmm. Don't see a date. But it is called America. And she has a website, uh, glorybstitch.com. And another free design, sorry, sorry. This one is called USA, USA. It's by the Perry Grove Peddler. And it will look something like this. I'm gonna prim up the colors a bit more. So I think, no, I have one more. Um, Fourth of July. This one comes from, again, the uh, Punch Needle and primitive, primitive Stitching. This was the premiere issue. And it's called American, Americana Abe. And it is by Joyce Reed. I love his log cabin back there.
I have, oh wait, I think I have two in this one. This one is a global. This one is designed by Sandra Sullivan and it's called Liberty Parade. I love those crows. And I'll be stitching this with for the call, called for colors. Nice and prim. Then my next one is a digital pattern from cross stitch, just cross stitch. So if I can, come on, turn around. It's called, oh no, lost it. Here we go. Um, Matilda Hornbuckle by uh, Lori Brecklin at Not Forgotten Farm. And I just think she's so weird. <laughs> a pumpkin lady sitting in a shoe. And that's from Just Cross Stitch Halloween um, 2013. I believe this one was also from Just Cross Stitch 2013. If anyone needs to know, I can find out for sure. I just printed it out when I was looking through. Yes, it is. Um, I like, I like the digital subscriptions, but I hate having to scroll through everything to find exactly what you're looking for. Unless there's another way to just go directly, you know, to page 59. Uh, and not have to scroll through every single one, but it is called Ghoul Tidings and it is a Plum Street sampler from Paulette Stewart. And again, I just love that the cats are pulling her little wagon. And like I said, it was from the Just Cross to Halloween 2013. My next one is another heart in hand called Pumpkin Hill. The reason I'm doing all these smalls, I have an area in my home that I have like just like a wooden bowl full of smalls for each season and I'm lacking um, a few to fill the bowl and I just thought I would stitch them up. So, my next one comes from uh, the most recent uh, Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2015. Very familiar with this. And it is the Witch Duet, and I will be stitching both of those. And I have a neat idea for the finishing on those. Which hopefully, I don't think these will take long at all. Then I have another one that you guys are probably familiar with in the same magazine, Preschooler, The Pumpkin Man. And he was just creepy enough that I fell in love with him. Then another digital one. This is another Plum Street Samplers. This is from the uh, Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2012, and I just printed it out from that. It's called Not Forgotten. And I love that one. And then my very last one of the 30, I do have a 31, but it's called all Hallows Eve is from Threadwork, Threadwork Primitives, and it looks something like that. It's a free one on her blog, still available. That will be a fairly quick stitch. It's not really a very good representation of, there we go, maybe that's better. 
And then my very last one for the 31st, since all of these are small, all of these are, with, with the exception, I think, of Ghoul Tidings, they're all under 100 by 100 stitches. So they will stitch up quickly. They hopefully will finish. I'll, you know, I'll get them FFO'd quickly. But my last one is one that I mentioned in a previous video. I decided, okay, what can I do for the 31st? I want to do something special. And I've decided to go ahead and go with something from Blackbird Designs. Thank you, Sarah Tobias. And I have decided that I will go ahead and I will stitch this uh, Sarah's needle case. And I am going to make it into a needle case, I decided. I, I toyed with the idea of just stitching them all together uh, on a single piece of fabric and framing it. But the more I thought about it, I really like the needle. I mean, that's why I bought it. I bought it specifically for that pattern. There are many patterns in here that are really cute. Um, but when I saw this, it was like, I have to have it. And I bought the supplies. The unfortunate thing is when, when I bought this, the lady at the LNS calculated the fabric. They didn't, they, they were out of stock on the fabric that's called for. So she pulled a different fabric. I agreed that, yeah, that was good. This piece requires a piece of fabric that is 54 inches long by 7 inches wide. I, had I was buying many things that day and she said, well, I don't have a piece that's 54 inches long, but I'll calculate for you how you can make this with the fabric that I have. So I left it up to her and it wasn't until the other day that I pulled that fabric out and I really started reading the pattern that I realized there is no way that I can fit all of this on the piece of fabric that she cut for me. And it's from a store in Virginia that not, I've never had any problems with them before when I purchased things there before, you know, but they, they label the fabric for you. They, they put the name of the fabric and they put your project name on the label. So I know that I have the right piece of fabric Kit it up with this. But in order to make this, you it's a, a single piece of fabric that you stitch in four sections, this, 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 and this, but you leave space between all these so that you can fold it up to make the pockets. Well, the piece of fabric that she cut is like 30 inches long by maybe 15 inches wide, there is no way. There's just no way. And I was so frustrated because it was like, I want this fabric and it's a 40 count fabric and I didn't want to have to order anything else. So I have switched the fabric out to a 36 count. So my final piece will be a bit smaller than this, but I'm okay with that. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> I think that it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to start. I am going to, because they're all smalls except for the, the last one, I am going to continue on with my regular whips that I have going on, um, which I will do an April update for you guys in a few days and show you my progress on those. But until then, I can't wait to see what you guys um, start in May. I've been watching your plan, your mania plans, and I'm so excited for everyone. They seem to be doing a wide variety of things, and I think that's neat that we can choose um, whatever we want. And I'm going full force with 31. So I will see you in a few days with my update. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and I will talk to you soon. Bye now.